Welcome back to Cradle to Grave R. If you haven't checked out cradletograver.com, please check it out. It's a good way to find an organized set of tutorials that I put together for you. So it's just a little bit more handy than sometimes going to YouTube or other uh, venues for my content. So check out cradletograver.com. Today we're going to talk about more predictions and linear models, but this time we'll plot some new points on the same line with a different color so you can kind of see where the prediction is, just to give you a little more insight on what's going on. And I think you'll find this a little bit easier than previous tutorials because you've already done this once before. I'm just going to expand on what you've already done. So let's start off with, like I always do, I want to start off with let me zoom in here. I want to start off with uh, an example data. So EX data, I'm making this up as empty cars, my favorite data set, right? So command enter, let's take a quick look at that. I'm going to click on the actual example data here. You'll see it's got uh, 32 rows of data and about 11 columns. All right, so we're going to deal with miles per gallon and displacement. So what we're going to do is we're going to predict the displacement based on the miles per gallon. We'll just see if we can do that, right? So let's close this out now that we have our variables of interest, our VIP, very important parameters. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. Now, so what we want to do is first, let's first draw a scatter plot, right? So we'll need our library ggplot2. Let's load that in and let's just go ahead and First, create the scatter plot so we can get a kind of visual of what's going on. So we'll do ggplot, and our data is going to be equal to our example data, right? And what's our aesthetic? We have aesthetic, we want to use miles per gallon and displacement. So the x is going to equal miles per gallon, and the y will equal our displacement. All right, so we can't finish there because we don't actually have a geometry. So let's add geom point, our favorite one to do, and just go ahead and command enter on that. You will see, once I get out of the way, boom, you will see that the scatter plot has been created. I'll zoom in for you, just a tad. And, it, you know, you can kind of see that there might be a possible linear relationship. You can kind of draw a line diagonally down here, maybe, somehow. So that's what you can expect when we create our linear model for this. Let's find out. Let's find out. <laughs> now, one way to do that, remember, is to actually add a geom smooth. So plus geom smooth. And what's our method? Our method equals linear model. So done deal. Just as predicted, what do you know? We have our linear model with the gray band being the confidence interval. So there's a 95% chance that uh, the average data point that's added to this will be within that interval. So that's what that means. All right, so let's let's focus on adding more data to this plot just to see where they would line up. But first, we need to create that data. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say more data. Hey, I've got some more data I want to check out. I want to predict my new stuff based on the model that you created. So based on the model we create, we want to be able to plot the new stuff. In fact, we didn't actually create the model yet. We plotted it. Don't get me wrong, but we didn't actually save it anywhere. We plotted it with that GM smooth method equals LM. So let's just do that first. Let's first save our model. We'll call that model one. And we call it model one because we might have five or six different models to play around with. And eventually we're going to see which model is the best one. So you might cycle through multiple models with different ways to predict. Okay, so our model one, our linear model one, because we might do other models. We might want to predict displacement based on something else. Let's go back to that real quick. What if displacement and miles per gallon were not as correlated as we thought, and we decided that displacement and weight were more correlated? Ah, we'll check that out, maybe, right? So that's why we have multiple models. This is model one, and we're deciding we're going to do a linear model, and we're going to base our linear model. We want to we want, to re, re, we want to figure out the response variable, which is displacement, by the explainer variable, which is miles per gallon. We think that displacement is, is explained by miles per gallon. And what's our data equal to? So our data is equal to example data. And then we run that. And now we have a model one stored. We can use that model. What are we going to use it for? Well, we're going to use it to predict the future. So we have the model, which the model doesn't show us a whole lot. We can do coefficients, remember? 
model underscore one, boom, you have a 580.88 intercept. That's where it crosses the vertical axis, which looking at the plot, uh, if the plot actually went down to zero on the x-axis, I could see that, right? It's not quite, we didn't set our limits to, to show that. Um, and then of course the miles per gallon slope, see how it's negative, negative 17.42. Remember in y equals mx, B days back in algebra two or algebra one, a positive slope goes up and to the right, a negative slope goes down and to the right, right? So this one's going down. As you as you go to the right, it's going down, so it's a negative slope. It's a quick way to kind of do a sanity check, anyways. That being said, now that we have a model, we have a model that we can use, we know the equation, but we don't really need it because we're gonna have R do the math for us. Let's create some new data. Now you have a vehicle that you've never tested before and you wanna call it more data. I have more data. I'm gonna say, hey, I have a data frame because it's gotta be the same type of data. Um, so data frame and data frame work well together. You know, Vectors and vectors work well together. So we'll create the data frame. The data frame's only gonna have miles per gallon. It's all I got. I knew what their MPG was and I'm gonna set that equal to a list of numbers. So let's say we have a 22 two miles per gallon, we have a 27, and we have a, I don't know, let's go 32, right? We have these new data points, but we only have miles per gallon. We set it into a data frame, so let's command enter on that. So now that is stored. Our more data is three observations of one variable. You can see that right here. So if I click on that, you'll see it's just one parameter, miles per gallon, or one feature, and it's got three observations. Close that out. And what are we gonna do with those? Well, we wanna figure out the prediction on what would you predict the displacement to be? Well, we could do that, and we are gonna do that, but we're gonna do it with data first. So I'm gonna call it, you know, I'm gonna call it predict one to follow the model one. So model one's first set of predictions is gonna be equal to, remember the predict function, so predict. And what do I wanna predict? Uh, let's see. What do I want to predict? <laughs> well, we need to bring our model in. So we, we can't predict anything without a model to use to predict. So we bring our model in, and then all we do is bring in our new data. So here's a model that was created. You could store that model anywhere. You could save it to the desktop. You could send it to your friends. You could send it across the world. People will be able to use this model if you send it to them. They don't have to know the underlying data. They just know that that model contains everything you need to do to predict. So. That's just one way to look at it. But our new data is, and it's, un, it's new data equals straight up more data. That's it. So command enter on that. It doesn't show you anything, but if I type in predict one and we watch the bottom screen here, you will see that we have three new displacements. So displacement one is 193, 110, and 23. So they correspond with 22, 27, and 32. So if you have 32 miles per gallon, your displacement is 23. According to the model that we're using that we created based on the data that we had, which is a linear model, it's a very simple linear model, we use that model to predict new outcomes, new observations. Now let's go ahead and plot that. So we wanna plot that by, if we go back up, if you take a look at our ggplot up here, we've already done a lot of the work up here. Let's not repeat that. Let's not copy paste and all that good stuff. So let's just call this our plot underscore one and set it equal to this plot. So I'm going to do command enter on that to re rerun it. So now plot one is stored over in my, my global environment. You know, it's plot one right here, list of nine. You can't really tell what it is by clicking on it. You'll see like this this mumbo jumbo, you won't understand it uh, quite yet. But so model one is, I'm sorry, the plot one is a GG plot that's stored. But now I can reuse plot one. So how are we gonna do that? Let me scroll down here. So we can just say plot one, let's do this. Plot one, if I can get my type into work, is gonna be assigned plot one. So it's assigning it to itself, right? plus other things. See how I'm doing that? So it's like, you know, you repeat it. Plus I'm gonna add a geometry. What geometry am I gonna add? I want to add my prediction geometry. So I'm gonna add another geometry, geom point. This time I'm gonna say data is equal to more data, but my Y axis for my aesthetic, I'm gonna, I'm, you can put your aesthetic inside of here, my aesthetic, I'm gonna say Y is equal to 
the predict one values. And let's just go ahead and make the color equal to red so we can really see it stand out. Let's see if this works. So now you have to actually type in plot one because I just stored it as plot one. So let's just retype it in. And there we have it. Uh, let me zoom in for you and I'll bring it over. You have these three little red points, which I can zoom in a little bit more. You see two of the three on the screen and right here is about 20 of 24. This one's about the 27 and then there's a third one. I don't think you could see from there it is. So there's the third one down at the bottom. See those three points? Now notice they're all on the actual line, right? They're all on the blue line. Well, that's what we expect. It's a linear model, so it's just a straight line. So in order to predict a new value, you have to pretty much run across that line. It's gotta be somewhere on that line. Now, is this the best prediction? I don't know. We haven't figured out ways to measure how good this prediction really is. But I wanted to show you again how to run this through with a different data set so you get a little bit more experience and a little bit uh, more, more um, muscle memory for it. But then also to actually show you how to plot those three points on top of the points you already have so you can get a better visual. You know, it might not make any sense, right? So you want to get a good visual all the time. Let me zoom back in on this one more time. Let me give you the example of not making sense. And I, and I haven't looked this over yet, but just as an example, look at this red dot right here. Notice there's no other dots inside of this band. I mean, there's almost nothing there. So maybe there's some sort of weird, you know, band that they just will never exist. The only way to find out what this red dot truly would be is to go out and say, hey, I'm going to do a mile per gallon of whatever that is, 22.22. And I'm going to see what the displacement is based on whatever speed they, they run it, et cetera, et cetera. And if the point or the displacement they get is truly equal to this red dot, awesome. Your prediction worked very well. Your model worked really well, which allowed you to predict. If every single time you ran this test, though, none of these red dots were close, then maybe your model is off and it's not predicting very well. But we'll work on that. We'll create more complex linear models in the coming tutorials. If you haven't, please subscribe. And it would really do me wonders if you share this across social media, tell people about it, and check out cradletograver.com. I will be making that a more aesthetically pleasing site where you can go in and have all of this very much organized. So thanks, and leave your comments below. Let me know what kind of questions you have, and I'll try to answer them.